Um, good afternoon, everyone. Hope you have a very nice lunch. And uh, also, <coughs> I'm Ajita. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, build your own linter, um, that is UVM Linen. What I'm going to share today is about how we made the custom lint, that is UVM Linen for the IEEE UVM core code development. And I'm working for a company called Asfigo, which is based out of London, UK. Um, all right, here's my agenda for my talk. That I'll go through introduction as well as I move on to why custom linting is needed and IEEE 1800 are two core lint requirements and then how the sample lint rules are for the core and also the lint rules for your UVCs or VIPs and the results and what we gain out of this, what we have achieved as a team. All right, so what are the key uh, challenges in chip design flow? Okay, that is already there for everyone we know. And then these are the areas that we can, I can, our, our team can help. Uh, basically, in essence, we can shift left and the same the time and cost for your chips and do it in an open source way, right? Which is basically, it is, you can develop, I can develop, or we can go for, a, right, community development, which will make the chip flow open source way with, without dollars, too much dollars. All right, so traditionally when we talk about test bench code, we all heard about, or some of you are familiar with lint, that is more for the design, for the implementation of your spec. Yeah, we know the design, we know the code, okay, we go for lint checks, okay, so these are the structural checks, there are different kinds of checks that you go for, that's more for the design perspective. What about your verification code, or the test bench code that you have written? Have you heard about any test bench linters? Of course. Right, not much. The reason, the traditional reason being, uh, the test bench, modern day test bench today, it is about system A log and right UVM and whatnot. Uh, even Vera, these are all class based test benches where your test bench is dynamic. The lint checking is traditionally known for as static checks. If something is decided during the runtime, how do we really, right, verify the code or the qualify the code? So that is where uh, the typically the challenges in terms of test bench lints. Uh, but we crack that, that is mainly due to the lack of parsers, especially in open source way, parsers and language support and then write APIs and other things. Now the ecosystem is really moving fast or I see attraction. So the test bench length is possible because of open source way now and especially based on system way log parsers. So the EDA vendors, yeah, before that it was very difficult because open source passes are not available for system by log and especially the test bench lint, it is always static. The mindset takes time to really change. It is, that's why you don't see many uh, linters, of course, right? So you know few of them, but not many. All right, so this is, and other one is yes, I have, I know these are my requirements for linting. Uh, this is my rule that I want to check. Uh, can you really ask your EDA vendor to go for a custom rule? Or this is what my requirement is. Can you go and really write, develop and deliver it for me? No, unless you're a big company, that's not going to really happen. It requires a large push. Okay, this is my requirement to see at the end of the day of your requirement. It's going to be custom way, it is not possible. So this is where as we go and <clears throat> UVM lint is possible. So the PIAS lint is the open source lint based on system very log which is develop my team, and then right, uh, you can use, uh, use it. It is, I can uh, um, give the scan code for my repo. Uh, if you want to participate, yeah, we can do that. <clears throat> and when we go for, right, your own way in terms of, right, this is my custom re requirement, how that, right? So when this is my, right, lint checks that I want to do, but is there anything common? Right, is there anything common? Okay, there are domains and then there are different kinds of your expertise and this is my preparatory designs. There's no way that you can come up with your common set of rules. Okay, this is what we want. No, so that is where another challenge in terms of your linting in terms of test bench score or right verification. 
So the challenges in terms of pushing your custom implementation and also to coming up even with the spec of what is agreed, what is common for all of us. And as I said, the tool and parsers, APIs, that plays a huge role. When it is uh, right, the paid solutions, you don't get to really write uh, full access to play around those rules or implementations. Not everything is, it is tied by the R&D, not by you. You just get to use as a user, not as a developer. Okay, so in Aspigo, we came up with um, open source test generator. This is called PySlint. It has been presented in many conferences and it is based on uh, Slang and then PySlang is API, which is used for this. And then PySlint is on top of this. So it's an open source implementation of your test bench rules. That is what I'm going to talk about. And PySlint is for system array lock that is open. Of course, when you want a custom rule or custom implementation of this is my spec, or, these are my rules, this is what I want to check. So that is UVM lint. That is still, it is a closed one. It is not, because it depends on what you want. The customization comes from you as a user or as a company, as a product, then that is up to you, whether you want to keep it open or you want to really right, uh, make it closed one. All right, let me move on to why do we need custom test bench linting. So when I say BYOL, that is build your own custom lint, right? So does one size fit for all? That is what the ED, typical EDA, right? Paid commercial tools offer. Okay, here are the sets, here are the rules. Okay, you go and use it. No, I need these, okay, the priorities changes, right? Priorities are depending on what you want or what you, your domain, which domain you're coming from. And also, when it comes to linting, there are a lot of preferences in terms of coding. Okay, I, this group, or this company follows a different rule. I, right, another company follows a different rule. Their preferences and choices are different. So can one tool really fit in all of this? And it is very difficult, believe me, as an engineering team and as a team lead, when I talk to people and then come up with, okay, what are the things that we can really agree on, then go ahead, it takes a lot of time. <laughs> yeah, so it is, so, and the priority changes. So, I don't want to go behind, okay, saying especially uh, in, um, uh, when I talk about design linting, there is always a complaint about saying a lot of noises. When you say, when you, in the same line, when you talk about linting, you'll also hear about noises. How do you filter noises? This is where the custom lint comes into picture. I don't want everything which is built for everyone. I just need only my custom rules. These are the specific ones I'm interested in, in terms of functionality, and this is my style. I know my code base is based on these styles. I just want to go only target on them, not really everything else. Yeah, so that's why um, I put the chart, not really in the same shape and sizes. Your requirement, okay, someone may be preferring in terms of functionality, that is their top priority. The other one, the team coming from debug, no, I do, I am having a lot of debug pain, that is what my focus is. And then someone says, no, I want performance, okay, fine, the code base is ready, I just want to focus on only performance. Is there, can I focus on those specific rules? You can do that. So that's what custom rule can really, right? Custom linter can do for you. Uh, it's not only the rules, okay, these are the set of options. And then based on projects or based on your product, you can also configure it. This line of my product, okay, records this set of rules, safety rules, yes, functional rules, yes. The other one, maybe only performance, and then, right, naming. You can choose your set of rules and then enable them. So the configurability is the key. You can focus on what you want for which line of product. Is it minimum, is it the high-end product, or is it the base one, or is it going to be the, right, the mainstream one? So you can choose by all of this in your custom linter. All right, so uh, the IEEE 18.4, that is the UVM standard dot two, that's the UVM standard. If you look, uh, sorry about this image, the first image, um, that is the Accelera Mantis saying, okay, the lint checks are required for the base classes in UVM, okay? You can really go to the website and then they check. There are, so this is basically that tracks the requirement for lint checks in your UVM base class. All right, 
So I just listed those requirements on the left side. So our team decided, okay, we can invest some right uh, investment. We wanted to build a right custom UVM lint for the IEEE base class itself. So these are the requirements that was listed. We right has after the brainstorming and discussion uh, right that happened with the team in uh, uh, DVCon US as well as after our own internal discussions. So we came up with the linting rule specs. So that's what a couple of the things that we have listed there, like. Um, to avoid race conditions, as well as right, enhance your code maintenance across races like UVM 1.1, 1.2, and then right, high triple UVM, and then style checks, as well as there's continuous integrations like the CI CD. So those are the things that you want to, okay, these are the changes that I want to, I made, and then you want to maintain, I don't want to disturb because of the future development. All right. So base one, the, our starting point for the custom right uh, lint is <clears throat> the, the requirement. From the requirements, we convert them into the rule spec. So basically, right, we come up with a set of rules based on your requirements saying, okay, this is the rules. So for example, avoid race conditions around the static constant. Then the functionality is, right, basically to, for, to avoid the race conditions, but in static constants. So th this is basically, this is the issue listed in, right, on the accelerant mantis. We came up with a rule for this. Uh, so we went on, right, having rules. Basically, this we call it as a rule deck. So we specify the rule. Okay, these are the functionality. These are the right description of this. So you, you can see that. Okay, so that is what we came up with for uh, the IEEE um, code, right, um, the base classes. Are we done? Because we have written enough rules for the UVM base class itself. So our job is done. We don't need any more rules or lint checks that you want to do. Okay, what about your UVM VIPs? That's not your best class. So that depends on your, what you're working on, what your VIP is. Is it going to be AXI or is it going to be, right, your image processing or, right, it's going to be a GPU or it's going to be your Ethernet, or it's going to be a accelerator? No, you need your own custom rules for that. So the AXI protocol checks. Is it relevant for the accelerator, A accelerator? No, you can come up with your own spec for your own UVM, right? The VIPs. Yes, you, you right, like the same. The process, right, starts from there. You give the requirement, okay, this is what it is. Then we come up with the rules, okay? This is the rule spec, for example, for a given uh, UVC. And then, right, we'll go and implement about that. Here's a snapshot of your own custom lint. Okay, this is open source and it's based on, right, slant, by slant. All right, so you see a couple of rules, how this is going to be implemented and then they, yeah, you're, if you're familiar with this, right, uh, Python, uh, Python <coughs> syntax, you can go through that. Or uh, you can just, right, download from our repo. All right, so we know the rules spec, we have implemented it. So what am I going to get? So this is the summary of the result, especially on the UVM 1800.2 base classes. So you see the number of violations for each specific rule. For example, uh, even simple one-liner if and else, that is not recommended in encoding, encoding guidelines, but it is there in your UVM base class itself. Basically, this has to be right tagged, it has to be named. And for example, uh, the race conditions that is there in system very log that can be avoided using your static constant. So that caught eight functional bugs or right, the violations that are present in your UVM based class. And of course we know we recommend, okay, coding guidelines. We have so many right documents we talk about a lot, but still there are the end labels are missing in the base class itself. You can look at the numbers, it's two, eight, six. Here, 286. And then when we go for the classes, there are methods. That's also missing in labels. It's a basic feature that we all think or take it for granted. Right? And I can't really right, um, put enough emphasis on virtual methods. When you go for the system very log coding, we typically say it as a basic guideline saying, okay, you declare anything as a virtual method. That is missing in your base class itself. So how do we Really cash out of this, you run your lint checks, then you will know what you're missing. 
All right. So here's one slide that's going to talk about what happened, especially when we go for continuous development. So the EUVM 1.2, to, right, high triple EUVM, they made a lot of code improvements and changes. So sometimes it's a good change. Okay, there are code improvements. There's sometimes, right, there are mistakes or something has changed. So I just, in the morning, I ran those checks. The green ones are for IEEE UVM, the good ones. You see the right, lot of bad codes also checked in, that's the red one. So there are a lot of mistakes that happen. So that was flagged by your custom UVM lint. So it's not that, okay, we are going from one to the other. There is always, and when we, see, this is a strong philosophy I recommend and then, right, champion as well. When you touch something working, ensure that it is going to be intact. The moment you touch, that something is going to break, for sure. All right, so this is, here is a sample output from our UVM lint. So it reports about the violation and especially talk about which rule is being violated and gives enough information about avoid non-virtual methods inside your UVM BCL code. And also it really gives information which line is relevant or specific, particular to that behavior. So in this case, it gives a file name and then the line number where this, right, uh, the coding is, guidelines is violated. And also we give a sample output. This is a sample output from our custom built UVM linter. You see the right uh, the file name as well as the line number, and then which category it is being violated. It, it gives it tries to give all the information you want to really go and fix for it. Yeah. All right. So by using custom lint, you save enough time, and then money not really uh, related to the debug or the uh, yes coding style is there, naming conventions are there, especially with respect to performance debugging functionality. So, and by saving your dollars, going open source way. We are not really a commercial vendor, which is open source. The entire code base is available in their repository. You can really download it and try out and let me know if you have any feedbacks. Uh, you have your rule definitions, you want to really implement it, please drop a mail to me. I'll have a look and then take it to my team, right, what can be done. So, no more about, okay, pushing EDA vendors asking for solutions, okay, this is what I want to achieve, and then, right, uh, being in their mercy, rather, right, so that is, yes, innovation is there, but we, open source also can lead innovation in terms of saying, yeah, we can, we know our problems, this is how we solve it, we can be the leading force of taking EDA into open source way. So that is what my, uh, right, team's experience in terms of custom-made linter. Um, am I too fast? I, or I, have I made successfully everyone sleep? <laughs> uh, no, quite means there are only two outcomes. Either everyone is sleeping or, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So any questions? I'll be happy to take. Um, that's a QR link. If you can, always drop me a mail. That's basically the C plus. Can you repeat the question, please? Do you repeat the question? Yeah, sure. Um, yes, variable is a linter test bench linter. Um, yes, I know about variable uh, test bench linter. That is based on C plus plus. What pious linters is based on pious slang. Okay. So the implementation is different. That is C plus plus, right? This is system error parser. So it's a C++ parser, this is a system log parser. So two different languages. Yeah, of course I can do. If you want, your customer is interested in doing a custom lint, we can do that. Okay. So basically the philosophy I'm coming from is I can see how the company can support in terms of test bench linters. We have the expertise, the language choice, and what you want, what I have as a choice. I leave it to you. You want variable C++, I can do that. The same rule, what we have done, can be ported into C++ as well. Other variable solution. Yes, we can do that. Yeah. 
sorry. Uh, possibly a stupid question, um, but could you actually use the same techniques that you then lint RTL for design rather than just do it for, for the verification bit? Yes, that's why we see. I went through the system log parser that yeah, that can be used for design as well. But my expertise is mostly on verification, so I focused on that. Yes. And then there is enough design linters are there. I don't. Know, I'm not a competitor for anyone. Rather, I want to focus on my expertise. No, 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 no. no. when I say see the uh, the moment you're talking about, so the test bench linter is already available. It is known. It is popular. But when you talk about test bench, no. Not many, so that's why I wanted to really right go behind it. That's where my expertise is. Brilliant. Yeah. Thank you. So much, Thank you. Uh, do you have a sign-off methodology to go along with this? Uh, that I leave it to you as an user. I do really don't really right want the sign-off. Yes, I can. But see, where I can pitch in is this lent or other, uh, the rule checks can be used for compliance. Yeah, the sign-off compliance can be. See, when you talk about sign-off, how it, it is manually done, how can you do it? But your test bench, yeah, I can tweak the configurations for the sign-off, we can do that. Yeah, I mean, it's just when, when you want, you know, in certain cases, if you want to waive specific rules. Yes. Um, yeah, sometimes that's built into the linter as a, as a feature. Sign-off can be done, but I don't really call them as, right, lint checks, rather, uh, sign-off checks. Yes, sign-off methodology can be supported using this. So it can be expanded to that. So that's when I said, you want A series, okay, we can support this, which these are the checks that you want to do or enable it, and this one you can wave off for the nether. So it's a plug and play. Thank you. It's a nice question. Thank you. Thank you. I think we're